Number 11, 11A and 11B, we're going to be given a graph and so all this will be given to you and they're going to ask you questions based off of the graph. So again the graph will be provided and so this one we're going to use here we have some uh, values that are uh, labeled there for us. Now the first one asks us to find uh, f of 5. Now what this is telling us to do is it's saying what is the y value when x is equal to 5. So we can just look at our graph here and so at the x value of 5 the y value is negative 2. So what I would put here for a is I would just put in negative 2. Now the second one for b it's saying what x value will give you a y value of negative 3. So it's actually asking you the opposite. So it says specifically find all values of x such that this is true. So then that means you want to look for what x value will give you a y value of 3. Now for this particular problem there's actually two cases where the y value is equal to negative 3. It's at negative 5 and 3. So we actually get two values. So we'll do negative 5 comma 3. There's two places where that occurs. Okay. Uh, next, for domain, domain is talking about the x values that make a function defined, or the x values that the graph uses. Now all these are closed circles here, which means that we're including all the endpoints. Now for domain, we look at the smallest x value and then the highest x value, and we're going to write that as an interval. In this case, we're going to put negative 5 to 5, and that's going to be in brackets. Smallest x value and the highest x value. Interval notation, the smaller number has to come first. Next, we're going to look at range. Range is the y values the graph is using. Now, the smallest y value is negative 3, and that goes all the way up to 3. So the y values will occur in between those. So this is going to be negative 3 to 3 with a bracket. Now, E says intervals of decreasing. Okay, so these are what you're doing is you're giving the x values for which the graph is falling as you go from left to right. So as you go from left to right, you're looking for the part of the graph that's going downhill. That's going to occur this section of the graph here. As you go from left to right, the graph is falling, and it's falling between the x value of 1 and between the x value of 3. So I'm going to put 1 comma 3 for my answer. This does not represent a coordinate. It represents x values. Whenever you indicate your intervals of increasing and decreasing, you can use parentheses on those. The reason why we're including parentheses is because at this spot here, for instance, at 1, 3, that wouldn't be considered increasing or decreasing. It's kind of constant there, so that's why we don't actually include the endpoints, because at the endpoints, we technically they're not increasing or decreasing. That's actually a place where uh, nothing's happening where it's constant. So for this case, we're always going to use parentheses for intervals of increasing and decreasing. Uh, F says, list the number at which F has a local max. Now if you see this phrase, the number, the number at which, that's asking you for an x value, whereas for G, if it says the value of the local min, that's a y value. So the way it asks it, and this will be the same wording on the test itself. If you say list the number at which, that means it's looking for x value. So it's saying what's the x value of the local max? So the, the max, you have to have an increasing part and a decreasing part. It doesn't necessarily have to be the highest point on the graph. It is in this case, but that's not always has to be that way. Uh, the x value is going to be 1. So again, x value we're using there, uh, that's for 1. We want the value of the local minimum. This point here is not going to be a local min because we don't have a decreasing part that comes before it. You have to have a decreasing and an increasing part in order for it to be considered a local or relative min. So it only happens at this point right here. So we want to indicate the y value at that point and that's going to be negative 3. So that's the answer for g. And then for h, it says how many times does y equal negative 5 halves intersect f? Well, negative 5 halves is the same thing as negative 2.5. So negative 2.5 would occur about right here. 
And if I were to draw a straight line through, that's what this represents, y equals is a straight, is a horizontal line going through. Uh, so that is going to hit the graph three times. So I would just put uh, three for that one. So I just look at the horizontal line, see how many times it, it hits the uh, f of x, and again that's going to be three.